Well, hello you. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review, and I hope that you are having a great day today. And thank you so much for coming back by. Today we're going to be talking about a old favorite of mine. Now, I have these dirty little secrets whenever it comes to books, and this author is certainly one of them. There are particular authors in the past that have made their go at life by writing things that are fairly intriguing and interesting. By God, there's some smut in them, right? And this is one of those authors, F. Paul Wilson. He wrote a series that a lot of people affectionately refer to as Repairman Jack. I was introduced to these books way back when, in 2003. Uh, if I remember correctly, one of his books was The Traveling Vampire Show. And I remember thinking, my God, what a pervert whenever I read that book. But with that being said, let's just get that out of the way. Yes, there's going to be all kinds of sexual content. We're adults here. We can handle that. So the book, if if you haven't figured it out, the main protagonist, his name is Jack. Well, he's kind of an anti-hero in a lot of ways. As mentioned, the author of the book today is F. Paul Wilson. The narrator is Joe Barrett. And the name of the book is The Tome. Zach, if you want to splash up when that was released, you can. He refused to do it, didn't he? The narrations, by the way, by Joe Barrett was actually decent and well done. The of course, with it being audible, the, the quality, you don't really have to worry about that so much because it's usually on par. Not like some of the other places that I was getting books from before I was introduced to Audible. Everything's always so crisp and clean. And now that internet has increased for pretty much everyone in the world, if you haven't already figured it out, if you use Audible, there is also a high definition thing that you can do, which really seems to kick that up a lot. So what makes this book interesting and why does it fit into our channel here? Well, it's because it's sci-fi related and it really goes out there at points, but it's not to the point of so far out there, you're like, ah, oh, gee, uh. it pushes that boundary. It's also in the descriptive nature of F. Paul Wilson that made these books shine for me. So I went back and I reread it because I was like, I want to make sure before I go spouting out at the mouth, as some people would call with verbal diarrhea, my memory of these books held true. And I've read the first one again. I don't know if it's that I'm in a different place than whenever I first read them or what, but the books, it's been so far off paced from what I'm used to reading that it really held my interest really well. Now, Jack is one of those unfortunate individuals that has a particular skill set. So it kind of falls into our, our raw, raw, capable of anything, male chauvinistic type of a thing that I cover sometimes. And that's no exception with Repairman Jack. Uh, these books, whenever it first opens, it's kind of almost like a Nior or Nior, 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 R, N O I R. I can't talk. It's that 19. 30s, 1920s detective agency feel. The, you know, like if it was a movie, it would be all grainy. You'd barely be able to see the person in the background because there's so much shadow. It's that tried and true old school story of I'm this guy. I don't usually take on these people, but I'm going to anyway because it's the right thing to do. Although I'm fighting against it, I'm still going to do it. So it's got that kind of a setup. There's also the realization of who he is and his character. So you get to see how he's intertwined with some fairly prolific individuals whenever it comes to like the UN or with helping people that are in these larger positions fix things. It even gives you the backstory of how he got started on it. So it's it's interesting to see all that and what brought him to where he is in life and why he's got that white knight syndrome, although he can be fairly selfish at points. And the reason why I say that is because the woman that he loves to death in the beginning of the book is forgot about a third of the way through whenever he meets a very attractive Indian woman. That's where the story really starts to diverge from what you think it's going to be and it gets to become a fun ride. There's these creatures called Rokoshi. They are completely tied into the ideology in the book of these two individuals and where they come from and their family line and lineage. A wonderful world that is starting to develop whenever it comes to this is lore, this is lore, this is lore. It doesn't hurt that whenever it comes to his writing of smut, the descriptions are really, really well done. Almost frighteningly so. So we'll just take that and we will set that on the bookshelf right there. Well done. Overly thought out. Smut. But it's good. Kind of. I didn't say that. Got it. Cool. <laughs> 
So some of the things that really kept me going in the book was just that. The one thing that I really did like is sometimes in a book you'll have story A and you think this is going to be the main story. Then your sub story comes up and that's actually your main story and story A is forgot. Well, not really so much in this book. Things wrap up and then we go into the second book and there's a clear continuation of his story as a person and a character and an individual that was well wrote, but those loose ends are already taken care of. Now, the feelings of the book, what did it extract from my soul as I was reading it? Enjoyment. I mean, it was just, it was fun to read. And also, it was really good to see some vigilante type justice. It was detail rich. It was setting up groundwork. And that was highly enjoyable. Also, the supernatural element of it, backstory, all these things, the way they all came together, it was a very satisfying read in that regard because it wasn't sloppy at all. I think just a little bit overkill on the sexual innuendo. That's my own personal preference, though. And quite frankly, I don't really think it detracts from the book. It's just that's where I'm at right now. Is I was just like, ah. No, this opens up an interesting question of the week. Here's the thing. These Rakosh that I mentioned, they become a primary player in the book. They're not good. They're not evil. They are pure, unadulterated evil. They don't care. They just do. Now, have you ever come across something that made you feel that way? That its hatred is not blind or seen? That it is just a primal force of destruction? Because that's kind of what these things are. Have you ever come across anybody or any thing that made you feel that way. What was it and why? Love to know down there in the comment section, not the description box as I used to call it. And <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the books we're going to be reading over the next few weeks to a month is going to be Aching God by Mike Schell, Will Destroy the Galaxy for Cash by Yossi Crawshaw, House of Teeth by Dan Jolly, and Legacies by F. Paul Wilson. And hopefully by then, I can't remember, is Pendergast coming out in January? I've been looking forward to the next one of those. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Your support is very much appreciated. Yes. YouTube wants you to check out one of these videos over here. Which one will you pick? It's up to you. Either which way, I will see you, and you, and you, and you, and you, 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 in the next video.